Okay, uh, my name is Charlie Sanabria. I recently joined uh, the Berkeley Lab and where I, I'm intending to continue some of the studies that I've done in RRP wires before uh, regarding the, their heat treatment. And today I'll be speaking about the dangers of skipping the 215 step uh, of the RRP heat treatment. Um, let me put my talk in a nutshell. Uh, my study started about three years ago when I asked what is going on at the mixing stages of the heat of this RRP heat treatment. What are we doing at 215? What are we doing at 400? Can these be improved? Um, and what I found was that the mixing mechanism does not happen like we thought it did at all. So towards the end of my PhD, I proposed a new heat treatment that is very specific in its goal. And what it does is it diffuses copper through nowside to avoid liquefaction of ADA. Now, I've presented this before, so I don't uh, want to go into the details of it. Um, there, uh, there should be a publication coming out soon on that. But the uh, results were good. Uh, we were very uh, encouraged by them. The JC went up, the HK went up, uh, and so in particular, those billets who were in the lower end of the spectrum, of the property spectrum, got boosted even more. So essentially what we're doing is moving that, that distribution of, of, pro of billet properties towards the high performance side and narrowing it quite a bit. Uh, so that's good, but every time I presented this, uh, I would be, uh, I get asked the question, well, what about the mixing of tin? Why did you skip that? My answer to that at the moment was, well, the 215 step has no effects on round wire properties, so why do it? Uh, but that bears the question, is it dangerous to skip the 215 step? Fair, fair enough, we've all heard the stories and we've seen traumatic images like this one. So in this talk, I will uh, show you a few things. One of them is that round wires seem to have no issues when skipping the 215 then, okay, round, that's round wires. We have to look at something closer to cables. And then I looked at some rolled wires. Rolled wires seem to have no issues when skipping the 215 either. Then I'll show you some evidence of compromised copper jackets, but that happens when the ADA melts, not when the tin melts. So then we, I have to ask the question, well, which one is it? Is it the tin or is it the ADA? And finally, the moment of truth. Cables skip in the 215, which are the samples that I have here. You'll get to, you'll get to take a look uh, later. And the lessons learned. So first, round wires have no issues when skipping the 215. If you look at round wire, the subelements have a really nice shape. You do the standard heat treatment. If you stop right after the, me the melting point of tin, what you observe is tin that has melted. This is supposed to be liquid, but of course I quenched it. And these are copper tin uh, faces that had, had enough time to diffuse and form a nice shell around your tin. Uh, for many years, we've thought that that protect, pr protects the, the, the wires from tin leaking out. Uh, but when I, when I did the same experiment with a, uh, skipping the 215, going all the way to 400, uh, the tin's really not going anywhere. Uh, I've never saw, in fact, I've heat treated about 1,500 uh, pieces of modern day RP wires, about 15 centimeters long, and I've never seen a leak on the wire surface. All right, that's round wires. Rolled wires. Okay, I rolled some wires pretty, um, uh, pretty bad, and I skipped the 215 step, went all the way to 350, quenched it, looked at the microstructure. Well, first looked at the surface, no leaks whatsoever. Then looked at the microstructure, and this was about, uh, yeah, 20 pieces, about 15 centimeter long, 58% rolled. No, no. Um, leaks on the surface and actually no tin going even outside of the, of the, of the diffusion barriers ex except these shear sections which are, they got pretty mangled. All right, so I, re I, want, I was also interested in the, what happens when the ADA melts, so I looked at that. Uh, right before the ADA melted, I quenched some samples, looked at the microstructure, and sometimes, actually this was the only, after, out of about 100 cross sections, this was the only place where I saw a significant amount of copper tin going outside of the diffusion barriers. Um, so, yeah, one, one cross section out of 100, maybe, maybe that says statistically how much the tin actually, uh, how far the tin actually goes. And then I heat treated all the way to the end and quenched it. And I saw quite a bit of these, about six, six examples of this. You would imagine that it was any liquid there, it definitely came out of the wire. So, um, what does this mean? I think it means that just a few instances of copper tin diffusing uh, 
close to the at close to the surface of the wire can result in more than a few instances of copper tin uh, of of uh, compromised copper jackets. All right. Uh, so if that happened at 400, which one is it? 200 or 400? Tin or ADA? Uh, now that I'm at Berkeley, I get access to cables, so that's uh, that, that's that's great because then I can see the real deal. Uh, I collected in our archive of cables, collected nine cables with all kinds of wires. You can see I have MJR, old IGC single barrier wire, some uh, PIT even, old MJR, uh, 5461 RP, modern RP, et cetera. So I have a bunch of cables. You'll get to see them later. But I want to talk about four right now. Uh, these four, whoops. MJR 5461, notorious for their stories about tin coming out of them, uh, RP5461, and the two uh, uh, recent, the most mo modern RP, 132, 169, 108, 127. All right, so here's the unreacted version of that MJR wire, and on that part of the screen, I'm going to show you what happened when I pushed the tin out as much as I could by ramping it at 100 degrees C per hour all the way to 350. So I was really pushing it. If there's any tin that's gonna come out, it should come out then, 100 degrees heat per hour. Significant amount of damage, the facets are, are, are pretty long there, you can see some damage here, or well, I mean, not damage, but deformation. And guess what happened when I, when I ramped it all the way up? Nothing, no tin came out. This is MJR. <laughs> you go. Uh, so it, not even in places like this, where, uh, I'm sorry about the picture, but it's a little blurry, but you can tell that the, that wire was pretty damaged. Um, so, next, RP5461. Oof, uh, a lot of tin came out. Um, now, there's an issue with this, uh, there's, a, there's a caveat here. This wire was, uh, had, a, had reduced copper between subelements. So the subelements were really close to each other. So may, any damage that, could, that you put that wire to, it could be more dramatic because there's less cushioning between the subelements. Nonetheless, a lot of tin. Uh, RP-132-169, I must say that also this is a QXF type cable, so the ones that it will be for the high Lumi. Absolutely no tin came out of it. Uh, this is about, as you'll see, it's about two feet of cable. Um, 108-127, this is the, the actual uh, strand that will go into the high Lumi. I heat treated it all the way up. A little bit of tin, just one bubble in those two feet of cable. So. These are the results. All of these wires didn't leak. All of these did. No. Yes. Now, I must be blunt and uh, speak out because this, these are QXF style cables, which I really thought they wouldn't have any issue with tin leaking. And as you can see, although one bubble of tin, it did leak. I've been saying for a long time that I, that, that wouldn't be an issue. I was wrong. So after all this work, it looks like the 215 step does prevent some tin leaking. And I see some smiles in the crowd. I, you feel free to say, I told you so. Uh, <laughs> however, I think there are some interesting things we can learn from this experiment. And the fact that MJR didn't leak at all. So what happened there? We know this probably has to do with the strand design, but it leaked a lot. But when we looked at the archive, uh, at the notes of this cable, when it was made, it was made a spe special way that it was rolled at a comfortable thickness. It was annealed at 200, hour, at, at 200 degrees Celsius for four hours, and it was re-rolled. This one, as I said, it was, it was made with reduced copper between some elements. But if this one didn't leak at all, and this one did, could those four hours at 200 be making all of the difference? Which forces me to ask, well, does the 215 have to be 48 hours long? I went back to some of my um, uh, images from round wires. If I ramped it to 100 degrees Celsius, yes, the copper tin doesn't have much time to diffuse and form that shell that uh, we think helps out. If I ramp it at 25 degrees C per hour, yes, some copper tin forms, less tin in there. About 24 hours in, 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 into that dwell, that, that, that step, it looks a little bit like this. 48 hours is virtually identical. So. No, I don't think it has to be 48 hours. It could be 24. It could be even less given the, the cables that I tested. So I propose this. Instead of holding it, why don't we just do a short dwell? A sh sorry, a slow ramp. 10 degrees C per hour could be enough to prevent your tin, tin leaking. Then you do your now side control heat treatment. That should boost your JC. You do whatever A15 heat treatment you want to do. 
And that, we've shown that it gives you about 8% increase in 12 Tesla JC at 50 micron in superland size and 21% increase in 12 Tesla JC at 35 micron in superland size. If you don't have 500 hours, I have another option for you. Almost as long as the standard heat treatment, only 200 hours. A little hotter of the outside control heat treatment, a little shorter, but it should give you about 3% increase compared to the standard heat treatment uh, at 50 microns and 14% increase at 35 microns. All right, so what did we learn? Round, round and roll wires don't seem to have any issues with tin bursting. Severely damaged developments can present a threat to wire integrity at the ADA melt. Now, tin bursts are seen in some cables when you really push them. However, it is very likely that the tin burst prevention mechanism that we've suggested, uh, that has been suggested by the 215 degrees Celsius step, is achieved a very slow, a very short annealing times. <coughs> and uh, finally, I have two options for heat treatment um, that, but that have different uh, boosts in the JC of, of your wires. So future work, I, re I really want to know whether we, whether the slow ramp is enough or whether we need four hours, whether we need 10, definitely not 48. Um, and uh, I think this, uh, I, I would like to see this heat treatment being tested in, uh, at least in, in small magnets. I, I think the CCT team has shown uh, interest in that heat treatment. And a question for the project leaders. Uh, would it make sense if we add a qualification step to the cable fabrication process, where let's say you put a two meter piece of cable in an oven, ramp it up, see if any tin came out. If it did, well, we probably have to be more careful with that cable. If it doesn't, well, cable's probably okay. And thanks uh, to my new, my new team at LBL, uh, excellent technicians, and, uh, and everyone who fabricated these, these, these cables, and uh, of course, uh, the wires as well, and thanks to the funding agencies. Yeah. Are there questions for this talk? Oh, well, we got <laughs> So, congratulations on getting off to a fast start at Berkeley. And so my question is, you're really questioning the annealing state of the copper, mm -hmm. right? You had a lot of experience in the deconstruction of the ETA cables in seeing deformation in copper. Is any of that useful to you? Um, Yes, I think, so I really want to look at the cross-section of uh, this guy right here. Yeah. What is going on there? Is the, is the tin really breaking, the, breaking out of the, of the copper, so deforming the copper, or is it was the, that was so compromised that it simply was a hole there from the get-go? Uh, so, so we'll see, and I think that, that looking at the cold working of the copper at the moment of the burst, uh, could have, could, could maybe that could tell us something about the whether there's really a pressure in there. Yeah. Charlie, yeah. what, what are you trying to accomplish with this uh, skipping this step? Is that to reduce the, uh, you know, time of the heat treatment or something? Um, I would, I would like to find the truth instead of us saying, oh, we have to hold this for 48 hours just because. No, we, I would like to, I would like to just really uh, understand what's going on. And yes, it will save us a few hours if necessary. I can tell you it has very little effect on the heat treatment, uh, unless it hurts something, which I haven't seen any evidence. No, exactly. It helped on JC. Uh, as far as, well, you, you're, Nikolai, you're talking about the, 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 the step, the 48 hours? I'm that, talking about the whole process. The whole process. For heat treatment, and then the heat treatment itself, and then yeah. uh, let it cool off in all these nine yards. You know? So this is insignificant. So unless you, you mm -hmm. gain something, you know, that I, I don't think it's important. 41%. 16%. So I don't know. Yes. No, uh, Charlie. So, yeah. so one more over here. Yeah. So you found the uh, leakage is in case. Good job. Yes. But you didn't in all the stands. So did you roll the same stands when you test in cables, or was very different? Uh, this I, I have the billet numbers uh, here, uh, and, but, but showing it to the to, to the audience probably would make much, wouldn't make much sense. But that was uh, a, the the one that I rolled was a 108 127 uh, standard uh, benchmark billet that we that has been tested several times. So 
we could look into the details of, of so I, but I really think rolling, now that I see this, I, it makes me believe that rolling the wires is really not that representative of what happens in the cable. The cables is very different, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, I suspect that you did this uh, heat treatment in free condition, right? In free condition? Free condition, yeah. Oh, good point. Yes, th these were uh, wound in, into a mandrel, uh, not much tension. What, uh, what happened in magnet, usually we uh, react coil in closed ma mandrel. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, it would be interesting if you repeat your uh, experiment when you have, for example, part of cable in, inside, confined. Uh, you know, stainless uh, steel fixture which uh, confining it. Expansion in both directions. Right. And then maybe you will see something. Maybe, different. maybe. So, so you're saying that the pressure, uh, that the pressure that, the, for example, is added to the colors could yeah, increase. Yeah. 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 I would like to clarify one point because it's not clear to me. Do you need to remove the plateau at 215 for getting this? Uh, 10% or 40% or because at a certain point I understood that actually you could you could yeah. keep it and you could still maintaining the good uh, the yes you you could keep off. you could keep it doing it or skipping it exactly. makes absolutely no difference in the IC so we can so, keep it Yes, but then, but then. Ah. I mean, if everybody is afraid, I mean. And but why? Why do we need to be afraid? That's my point. Towers. So, yeah. so, so uh, I propose that we move to a general right. discussion session.